Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm excited to show you this game from the War of the Ring 2023 World Tournament. We are in the round of 16, 16 players remain in the tournament, and this is my best of three match against Julianus. I have already done a video on the first game of this match. If you haven't seen it yet, I will pause for a moment. So I won that game, it was an exciting one, and I am now playing Shadow, they are playing free people, and let's jump right in. So I have allocated one eye and I rolled two more, but I did get enough musters, so I'm happy to see that. And they got two movement at least, and let's see what happens. So they move the fellowship and I miss. I muster Isengard, they move again, and this time I hit them, that's fair, and they get revealed. So this is one corruption revealed. Are they going to lose Gandalf? I probably would. And they do. Okay. And then I get Saruman to war because there's no way for them to get Gandalf turn one. I mean, Saruman in play. Uh, they hide using a muster. And then I decide to move armies. And I... Okay. And I move to into Gorgoroth from Barad-dur and Farharad to Nirharad. And then... They muster the elves one towards war, and I put a regular from Moria onto Holland. That's interesting. I guess I know that I have new powers rising in hand, so that maybe I'm going to send these units, once once the Fellowship moves on and gets past Moria, maybe these units in South Dunland, North Dunland, and Holland are going to end up going and attacking Rivendell. That could be a possibility. They draw wizard staff one turn too late, though if they roll a Will of the West here, they probably won't mind. Their password, by the way, I'm not sure if you saw, was wow please. So they are hoping to roll a Will of the West soon. I get a ridiculous number of musters allocating one eye. I still have not rolled a character die the entire game. That's interesting. And it doesn't really matter. They did not get a wow. Will of the West, and they move, and I hit them and reveal them into Moria. So obviously that is a little bit unlucky for them to get revealed there, and they take two more corruption. The minor sil silver lining is that this two tile that got drawn from Moria at least had a reveal on it, so they're and they were already revealed, so they're removing it from the pool. But still, that's kind of a rough start for the Fellowship. I get Sauron to war. They pass because I don't have any character dice or palantir. So that does, that's a minor silver lining. Not that I have any useful character cards to play against the Fellowship right now, but it gives them some, some tempo options and they can decide what they want to do with those musters. All right, I use a non palantir to play New Powers Rising, I guess because I want to get going with that plan. And then they pass and I attack into Fords of Eisen right away. Would you muster up a little bit more in Orthanc? I guess what I'm thinking here is I can put Rohan to war turn one or turn two and get the Witch King right now. If I attack into Fords of Eisen, attack Helm's Deep, attack Helm's Deep and capture Helm's Deep. All right, so they play scouts. I was hoping they didn't have scouts, but it's not unreasonable that they do. I'm a little risky here that if Gandalf shows up next round, Orthanc could be taken over by Ents, so we'll see. And then they hide the Fellowship, and I attack into Helm's Deep. Obviously, this would have been a much easier target if they didn't have three regulars and, and a leader in there. So it's nice that they had scouts. That certainly is a risk of an early Rohan attack. And they move the Fellowship here. I'm hitting them on a five or a six with two re-rolls and they're in Moria. So this could be painful, but they know that I don't have any character dice now, so they're gonna be able to at least get through it. Two hits, two sixes, so the, wow, and a reveal. So this has been a brutal hunt for the Fellowship. They have been hit, well, I guess I did have a decent number of eyes. That that first move into Moria, that was that was the unlucky one. This, this is not so unreasonable. I had, a bunch of dice. Okay, so, but getting revealed extra is tough. All right, let's see what the extra tile is from Moria. They lost a random companion, at least it wasn't Strider, and an extra tile is a two. That's really unpleasant. So this has been a pretty horrible start for the Fellowship. 
let's see what random companion they lose. They lose Mary. All right, so at least they've managed to keep Strider in the Fellowship. I move armies around here. Now, I guess my thinking is I have to get Orthanc covered so that if Gandalf shows up next round, I will not lose Saruman so early in the game if they happen to have an end. And by the way, they do. So that's, I think, reasonable of me. But then, yeah, is this really the right plan for all this mustering and moving? Like, I could have just mustered in Orthanc a little bit more. And then instead of having to spend two dice right here, I could have only spent one die. I think I wanted to get another... I wanted to slow down my military a little to put pressure on the Fellowship, corruption-wise. But I could have gotten the Witch King turn two if, instead of doing these double army movements right here, I had just mustered extra in Orthanc once. Then I could have... Well, maybe... Yeah, maybe not. Maybe I'm still off by one. All right, so they hide the Fellowship, and then I move Orthanc, and now I have a contingent onto the elves in Lorien. Okay, or on onto the Fellowship in Dimmerdale, and then I'll be able to attack Lorien eventually. And Orthanc is defended from Ents now. I still have not made a lot of progress against Rohan. Rohan is now one away from war, and it's just a scarier situation. Because instead of taking over Rohan quickly, they're going to get to muster up. I'm happy to see Rage of the Dunlendings. I'm certainly drawing the Rohan or the Isengard mustering cards. That's that's quite useful. I can transfer units from North Dunland into Moria and then Moria into Dimmerdale and have a good attack on Lorien pretty fast. All right, I roll. I allocate one. I roll one more. They still don't get their Will of the West. They only have one movement. They're passing. I play Rage of the Dunlendings exactly as anticipated to get Moria filled up, and then I play. A red tile because why not just wait and see they move the fellowship i miss them even on four dice that's about 50 50 so that's fine and i'm waiting to attack helms deep for longer because i guess i'm worried about putting rohan to war while they have three musters showing because that seems like a bad plan they don't have that many useful things to do with these musters yet so my plan, I'm guessing, is to attack with my second to last die and then muster the Witch King with this last muster. I attack into Lorien. I leave nothing behind in Dimmerald Dale because if they want to spend a ring now to move, that's okay with me. And if not, the Fellowship's going to be declaring next round anyway. They move armies, an army into North Athelion and an army into Old Forest Road. Fine. I attack into Lorien. So that's interesting. I, I'm basically giving up on the idea of... This is a very... I'm playing a very inconsistent game. I'm giving up on the idea of taking attacking the elves. I could have marched this army up towards the elves and possibly gotten Woodland Realm besieged before the elves got to war. Especially if I put Rohan to war first. Why did I give two free musters to Rohan when, and then not actually take over Rohan? I'm giving them time to prepare. Okay, well, let's see. I'm attack I didn't play any card. I'm attacking into Lorien. I'm putting elves to war, I guess. This is putting elves to war. And they get two hits. I get one. Elves are now at war. And then they muster Rohan to war the hard way. Okay. So, yeah, that makes sense. Because I've given them two free musters. It only, only takes one more muster to get them to war. All right. I get the Witch King and Lorien to try and take out Lorien quickly. And, ooh, and I top-decked Balrog. That's going to be very useful in this upcoming combat in Lorien. They draw Kyrdin's ships, which is nice, since the elves are at war. Hopefully they're going to roll a Will of the West. They don't declare into Lorien, which seems right to me. The Fellowship is a little hurt, but not... They can. They have some time. Yeah, I don't know. That's tricky. I guess their plan is to come down to Minas Tirith and heal up there. Depending on how the rest of the hunt goes, they could they could be okay. We'll see. They, I allocate one eye, roll one more, and they still don't have a Will of the West. Gandalf certainly is late. 
and the fellowship moves i hit them but at least one, only one corruption so they take it and i play black captain commands because i want to get two more nazgul i have full leadership in lorien now and i'm obviously going to play durin's bane i get no hits from the balrog that's annoying one hit on my combat roll they get one hit back am i going to bother to press i don't press i'm okay to just take it a little slower and cycle my cards they muster in rohan yeah rohan is definitely going to be a mess if i take too long and i've already taken too long so yeah this is the risk of an early rohan attack without following through there so I'm playing more character cards. I guess I'm, yeah, I'm cycling Flocks of Corbane because that's not a particularly useful car combat effect or card effect. And let's see, no hits at all. And they get three against me. Wow. Okay. So Lorien is holding. This is not good for Shadow. Slow military. All right. So I have to use a Palantir to muster an elite back into Lorien, hoping I can still take it out. I attack Lorien again. They're using another character card. I'm probably playing... Oh, I'm playing a character card. I'm cycling They Are Terrible, which is interesting because when a Hobbit is gone, the expected corruption from Lure of the Ring is actually two corruption. So if I'm playing, a, if I'm, if I'm playing for a corruption game, which it feels like I am at least a little bit, I might be tempted to save this. I guess the number of reveals in the hunt pool are a little bit lower. Okay, that's interesting. I might have, I really might have saved that. And just like, why not play Deadly Strife here and be done with it? I guess I'm, maybe I'm cycling for Cruel Weather. Cruel Weather is obviously good to get while the Fellowship is still out. All right. I play They Are Terrible and I get one hit. I would have gotten three hits with Deadly Strife. And they get two back. So this is just painful for me i'm only doing one i only did one damage i did cycle a lot of cards i'm attacking lorian yet again and now i'm gonna play my deadly strife after all of this how many dice did i waste holy cow i just really wanted to save that deadly strife for for rohan i guess <clears throat> wow i would have played that my current self would have played that much sooner all right, so that was a ridiculous number of dice to take out Lorian, but I did eventually take it out. And that has got to be feeling nice for the free people. They're mustering up in Rohan. Obviously, it's not great to lose Lorian, but still, like that was a bazillion dice, a bunch of cards. <clears throat> okay, moving the Witch King, preparing to take out Rohan. And now the problem is this army can play help on look for if they have that, or just attack in the hard way at the start of next turn. And also I have to worry a little bit about Lorien. They can go up and attack Lorien. So this is a mess. Look at the seven hit points of Rohan units. Not, not well played by Shadow. All right, I play more uh, red tiles. So that's good at least. And they get... Mithril Coat and Sting, which is incredible. Faramir's Rangers obviously will be useful. And they have help on look for. So maybe Gandalf's going to show up now. Fellowship declares one eye allocated, two eyes rolled. Still no Gandalf. Holy cow, Gandalf. All right, but they do have help on look for. So that is nice. And they get a very nice attack onto the Witch King into Helm's Deep. This is great. I play Candles of Corpses. So this is like a lot of corruption that I am I'm giving away. I could have, I absolutely could have kept that. And they get, uh, they get one hit against me plus one from no quarter. And I'm rolling only two dice because of the help on look for effect because there are three regulars in Helm's Deep. So yeah, maybe I should have attacked last round at the end of last round instead of trying to finish off Lorian. I mean, I just took too long in Lorian. That's that was the bottom line. Okay. Um they lose one unit. I retreat 
they now have filled up Helm's Deep. So great, great play by Shadow. I just made an absolute mess of it in Rohan. I muster more. They move the Fellowship. I miss. I play Worn with Sorrow and Toil now. Weird. So I guess I want to filter out Ents and maybe get lucky with other things. I am going to get three cards out of it. So I'm spending one card to get rid of three random cards. And it happens that they have Mithril Coat and Sting. So that is huge if I manage to get rid of Mithril Coat and Sting. But all right. I move armies. Move armies. Look at this. Look at this army going around. This North Athelian, this, this Gondorian unit really diverted this whole army and cost me a hit point because I had to leave somebody behind in Dagger Lad so that later this North Athelian unit can't just walk into Morinon once Gondor's at war. Wow. Way to go. That could be Faramir right there. Well, no, we know Faramir hasn't shown up yet, but okay. Um, it also has a little bit of a weird effect because had this army in North Athelian not been there, I might have moved to North Athelian and then Faramir's Rangers might have been played. All right, we'll see. So they muster more in Rohan. I move this army from Eastern Emin Wheel to Western Emin Wheel. Am I going to come and take Minas Tirith maybe? Besiege Minas Tirith by going around? I mean, this is just a mess. A mess of Gondor and Rohan. Holy cow. All right, so they move a second time because they see that my army is coming for Eastumnet. And um, they move safely. So that, that was nice. That was three dice on a five. I attack into Helm's Deep. And then I attack Helm's Deep. So I don't know what this army is doing in Western Emin Wheel. I guess it's going to help clean up Rohan and then pivot towards Minas Tirith. I play Swarm of Bats to cancel their Daylight. That always feels nice. And now I get three hits. Okay, they get two back. I... Stop and redraw. Happy to see Devilry of Orthanc as a combat card. I have drawn all of the red tiles. I have all of the red tiles. Wow. Okay, they declare the Fellowship into Minas Tirith. Right, so I guess I'm going for Minas Tirith to try and mess with them. They get rid of Worn with Sorrow and Toil. Yeah, so I think that makes sense for free people. As Shadow, if Worn with Sorrow and Toil is effectively uh, Cruel Weather, because it costs them an extra movement to get rid of it, that's not bad either. So I'm not feeling bad about that. I just need to go ahead and take Minas Tirith now. All right, so allocate one eye, roll no more. They finally get their Will of the West. Gandalf shows up in Fangorn. What the? Why am I not? So I'm not mustering in Orthanc? In case they have Ents? Weird. I'm just like, sure, kill off Saruman. I don't care. You know, if I put an elite there, do I... Oh, oh, no, I do have an elite. I have a muster, and I could do that in Orthanc. What am I doing? I don't know. Very weird. I mean, it turns out they have two Ents, but still... Like, they're not expected to have two ends by now. Wow. And they move the Fellowship. They're like, okay, I'm going to be happy for Shadow to muster into Orthanc. All right. So I guess that's what I was thinking. I wanted to rush to take over Minas Tirith. All right. They move safely, and now I'm on them. Okay, I, right. I see what I'm thinking. So what I was thinking was is if they move twice... If they, they, if they move without being revealed twice this turn, then they can actually get to Mordor this round. And I would rather they not do that. <clears throat> so I guess that's why I prioritized Minas Tirith. And I thought to myself, if I have to sacrifice Saruman <clears throat> to guarantee that they're not making it to Mordor this round, that's also fine with me. I'm willing to give up Saruman to stall them the whole round. Okay, so that's why I beelined it for Minas Tirith. Not exactly sure why I used. Why did, did I use a character die last time? What was my other movement? 
when I moved from Western Emin Wheel to Druid and Forest, oh, and then I also moved five from Gogoroth to my Minas Tir, uh, minus Morgul. So I'm preparing. I'm preparing a backwards Gondor attack. It's a little weird. I went all the way around, but okay. I avoided. I accidentally avoided or unknowingly avoided Faramir's Rangers. So that's kind of cool. All right. What am I doing? They're passing now because there's no rush. I draw a character card. Okay. I'm happy, I guess, to see Palantir War Think. I was looking for something like Nazgul Search, Nazgul Strike, or any of the tile drawing cards. I attack into Helm's Deep now to try and finish that off, and I'm probably going to cycle these character cards. So I cycle Cruel as Death. Obviously, Palantir is good, and I had two Palantir showing, but I want to cycle into something else. So I finish off Helm's Deep. They get, they use an Ent against me. So I take a bunch of hits. And now do I think they have another Ent in their hand? All right, so they move the Fellowship now because I just cycled a character card and I miss. So that was about 50-50 chance to hit them and only, you know, 25% chance to reveal them. So that is nice for Shadow. They, I'm attacking, I mean, that's nice for uh, free people. I attack into Westamnet. I'm cycling more character cards. I guess I'm getting rid of Breaking of the Fellowship. All right, I forfeit three and get two hits they only get one back i press and they go to fords of aizen okay certainly is annoying and now they move for the last time to get into mordor they and i draw three all right so they take a random companion get rid of gimli and now i use a ring here to attack fords of aizen because i want to cycle this lidless eye and I press, there's one left. And then, I, oh, and then I drew into Orc Patrol. So I play Orc Patrol to be able to try and draw any, any of these four reveals. And yeah, that could be, that could be quite good. And I do get a zero reveal. And um, obviously that's sad for the fellowship and, uh, I get two extra corruption. So, right. And then they lose a random and then Strider goes. So they're revealed and Strider is now dead. Obviously a powerful, powerful orc patrol. So, um, I was thinking about saving this until the end of the video, but I'm just going to announce it now. So that was an illegal play. Uh, I did not do it on purpose, obviously, uh, and my, neither of us noticed. So the rules for Orc Patrol are that you cannot play it if the last known position of the Fellowship is in a settlement. So even though I'm besieging Minas Tirith, honestly, even if I controlled Minas Tirith, if I took over Minas Tirith and I controlled it, I still couldn't play Orc Patrol if the Fellowship's last known position was a settlement, which includes cities and strongholds. So, yeah, so that's, that's really unfortunate. Um, I think we both just thought, yeah, sure, there are Nazgul there. You're besieging it. That's fine. You can do that. Because I could play Nazgul Search or Nazgul Strike. Those would be fine uh, because I do have Nazgul there. But you cannot play the tile drawing cards. So, yeah, so that's really, that's really too bad. Um I would have gotten two red tiles in, but obviously getting out those, the zero and the two and Strider dying, like that's just, yeah, a, a huge, huge swing that really uh, disrupts the the validity of the game. So um, we talk about it later. I will, um, yeah, I, I guess I'll just say now we end up, 
the we're talking to the judges we discover this later and um we end up replaying this game uh was the ruling that we should just replay this whole game because if you make such a significant rule mistake in a tournament game typically what we do is rule that it is replayed and and i think that's right if we feel like if the judges feel like the mistake rises to the level of like hugely significant, then I think that's the right play. That's the right ruling. It's a question about like how significant was this mistake? And I, I guess my feeling is that was a pretty significant mistake. Like that really changed the game. So I'm sorry to my opponent. Obviously I will, uh, it was unintentional mistake and uh, I'm glad that we uh, discovered it later and, and we'll replay this game. I still think this game is interesting. We could imagine that the fellowship got revealed or, you know, other things happened that the game could have continued like this in some, you know, alternate versions. Uh, so we'll just, we'll just continue the analysis, but I just wanted to note that that was an illegal play. You should not do that. And, uh, and we ended up replaying this whole game. All right. So I played Shelob and was obviously feeling pretty happy about that outcome before uh, I realized it was, uh, you know, and in fact, it was quite a while later that we realized it. Um, but still, okay, so I allocate an eye, I roll two more, and they get some nice movement, but obviously, it's pretty tough. They muster in Edoras, I attack Edoras, and I get two hits, even against uh, Horndark. They did they draw another end? Okay, so they draw, they drew all three of their ends. It's a little surprising. Um, but okay. So I take out Edoras. They go ahead and play Ents now, and then they play Mithril Coat and Sting. So that's good. Worn with Sorrow and Toil is the only thing they can get rid of it, and they know uh, that that's already gone. So they're safe to play it, even with Legolas in the um, Fellowship. The other card that could get rid of it is Nazgul Strike, but that's not playable while the Fellowship is on the Mordor track. So that's a nice play of Mithril Coat and Sting. And I have just a ridiculous number of red tiles in there. I move to take over, uh, I think, hmm, maybe I should defend Orthanc. I don't know. So I muster a regular in Orthanc and then move to South Athelion. I think generally keeping the free people from getting strongholds for free is probably a good idea. It's hard to know, but I, I think that was probably right. All right, so I'm thinking, okay, so I muster a regular in Dol Guldur and a regular in Orthanc. That's what I end up deciding. And then they hide. I play on on. They went. Now all four red tiles are in there. They move and get a one. All right. So that's pleasant. They take a random and it's and it's Pippin. So that is the most efficient they could do. And uh, then I move my armies, completing the capture of Rohan on turn seven after they caused a big pain in the neck, and the ends have killed Saruman. All right. They play Faramir's Rangers now, well timed, and I get the mouth of Sauron. I did that slightly in the wrong order because it would have been better to have the Mouth of Sauron with this army in South Athelion. I don't know exactly what I was thinking. I guess I was really rushing to take over Fold, but I was probably not exactly right. All right, so I'm up to nine dice again, or I was down to eight dice, but now I'm back up to nine. And I allocate one eye, roll zero. They get some movement. They hide the Fellowship. I muster the Southrons and Easterlings towards war finally. They pass, I get the South Rounds and Easterlings all the way to war, and now they move and they get a three. So, you know, that's pretty good, I think. Uh, they move, they lose Legolas and gain one corruption without using Gollum's ability. I am going to try and take over Gondor for my remaining hit points, for my remaining victory points. Do I have enough armies here? Yeah, probably. We'll see. I use the Mouth of Sauron to attack into Pilar gear. They muster in Lamadon and a leader in Dol Amroth makes me nervous about Cairdon's ships. I attack Lamadon. I attack into Minas Tirith now. Okay. Not exactly sure why, but sure. I cycle Desperate Battle. They, I get three hits anyway. They get none. And then I try and finish it off with an Onslaught. And there we go. So Minas Tirith has fallen. They use a ring to move and they get Shelob, which to be fair, like 
I, I would definitely expect to hit at least one red tile this run, if not more than one. So they're probably going to use Mithro Coat and Sting here, and instead they get a one. So that is very nice. Uh, are they going to use Golem's ability? They are thinking about revealing. They do not reveal. And we put Sheila back in. So that is an unpleasant hunt pool for them. I besiege Dolamroth, and obviously they do have Kyrdan ships. And then I use Ringwraiths or Abroad to try and attack into Dol Amroth. I got Mumakil, which is very good. Sudden Strike, by the way, does count for purposes of attacks against Mumakil, so it is a way to counterplay against Mumakil. They didn't have a lot to work with, just two Sudden Strikes. So, all right, I get three hits plus one, so this is not going well. And this could actually be game over if I, if I manage to take out Dol Amroth right here. And I have another Muma kill. Wow. All right, so two Muma kills. Oh, they get one, they, they don't get a hit with their Sudden Strike. I get one hit with my uh, leadership reroll and then they get three against me. So that's good at least. So I do not win, I do not win this, uh, Oh, no, I could still. Sorry. So I took three regulars, and then I pressed with the with the elite, thinking that there's a decent chance the Fellowship could destroy the ring next round. So if I can take out Dol Amroth right now, I win the game. I don't have great chances of rolling two sixes on eight dice, but I could. And I don't. Uh, and they get none against me. So that's that. We go on to next round. Let's see what they roll. They have... Plenty of eyes. Oh my gosh, they just top decked Amar Hill of Dol Amroth. Wow, that is really good. So I am now going to have trouble getting to 10 victory points this round. I roll two eyes. They think for a second, but I think you have to hold Dol Amroth. Yeah, they play Amar Hill of Dol Amroth. So that was a top deck one out of 16 because they already played Cairdin Ships. That was literally the only card that could keep Dol Amroth alive. And I have, like, now this army in South Athelion has to march over there to help them, but it's not that easy. Wow. Okay, so that's nice. And I start marching armies. What am I doing? Oh, right. I attack into Osgiliath. So this army in South Athelion attacks into Osgiliath. Does no damage but kicks them out of the way. I'm not sure why I bothered to do that. I could have moved like a... Yeah, I could have moved armies around instead of bothering to make that attack. Okay. I move not... Oh, right. So so I'm really being bitten by the fact that I didn't have enough army movements to get this army from South Athelion all the way to Dol Amroth because I played Shadows Gather and Shadows Lengthen to try and win this combat last round. And because I also didn't have the Mouth of Sauron with that army, I couldn't even use my character dice to get them all the way to Dol Amroth and still attack. So I have to I have to do this long movement to, to get them there and I have to use the character dice to reposition my army. So, um, and the fact that there was an army in Asgiliath, even this this army in Minas Tirith wouldn't be able to do it. Like I could move this Nazgul out of Minas Tirith to Osgiliath to merge up with this army, but it was occupied. So it would still take me two dice. All right, so I move Nazgul around. They play Elven Rope. I move armies. They move the they move the Fellowship and they get Shelob. Yeah, Shelob really wants to mess with <laughs> the fellowship this round this game and i mean look there were so many there were so many horrible tiles in here like literally only the zero the one and the zero there were only three out of i mean the three could be okay but these eyes are horrible so many bad things all right so shelob does three damage they reveal the fellowship because they see that they're i'm not going to be able to get to 10 or unlikely to be able to get to... No, I can't. I don't think I can get to 10. Um, so I'm... 
I play Morgul Wound here. So I am giving up. So the, the thing that I could have done was move army to Lamadon, move army to Dol Amroth, and then use a ring to make my final attack into Dol Amroth. But I see my, my cards. My cards are We Come to Kill, Foul Stench, and Devilry of Orthanc, plus Black Breath. I can't get four hits. I mean, very unlikely to roll four sixes. So I have to acknowledge that that's not going to happen, and I'm going to save this ring so that next time I can put it into the the hunt box if I have to. So that's my that's my plan right now. Get the extra corruption damage from Morgul Wound. They hide the fellowship. I attack into Lasarnach because I don't want to have to deal with that army. Mustering up and attacking back into Pelargir. And I'm happy to cycle something like Nazgul Search probably. It's a little weird that I didn't leave a regular on Osgiliath because they're going to move back to Osgiliath and that's annoying, but okay. I... Oh, and also, right, this is another minor misplay. I could have foreseen this whole sequence. Not, I mean, it's not that hard to count the number of dice and realize that I was going to have to move the companions or move my Nazgul. I could have moved them first into South Athelion and then attacked into Osgiliath so that I um, cycled a card then, earlier in the turn. Okay, I get one hit. They get two hits back. That's annoying. And then I press, but I don't move any into Lasarnach because what I really want is to move these armies over to um, Dolamroth. The other thing is I have Hill Trolls, so I'm not too worried. I'm going to get to upgrade some of these. I can leave a decent number behind, and then I can up upgrade them, and I should be able to take out Dolamroth next round. I'm thinking. I'm hoping. All right. So I'm thinking, all right, let's just go ahead and move in one more. We don't want them to be mustering up too much. They muster into woodland realm so that i can't go and also take dale which is reasonable and i muster an elite into north ruin so you know i'm i didn't really set myself up for a lot of success this round i mean what did i do i i like cycled a few cards and then i got an army from south athelion to pilar gear <laughs> yeah this is a mess all right uh, I draw nothing that really hurts the fellowship and they get we nothing that really helps the fellowship. So it's going to turn out to be, can Gollum lead the fellowship to the end? And can I threaten at least 10 victory points this round? And I get four attacks. That should be plenty. I have a ring. I should be able to do it. They draw a character card. I move armies and right so i'm like go ahead take pilar gear back i'm gonna go east rune to vale of karnan and lamadon to dolamroth and then i'm going to be able to get my 10 victory points so they go ahead and take pilar gear and move a bunch of armies into dale maybe it would have been worth it for me to leave a regular one regular in pilar gear that might have been reasonable so they couldn't do this sort of shenanigan um, I move, I merge up my army in Vale of Karnan and, and, uh, Dol Amroth. I play Hill Trolls, so now I'm prepared to finally take out Dol Amroth. What a mess that was. Imrahil really stalled, really stalled Shadow. Two rounds of stalling. All right, I'm going to cycle more character cards here. And I get no hits. They get one against me, and I don't press. All right, so I got Foul Thing from the Deep. I'm happy to see that. It's just a little backup. I do need to make sure that I take out Dol Amroth. So I'm probably going to play King is Revealed next time. I have a good number of presses. I'm probably still fine. I attack Dol Amroth again. I'm cycling Black Breath, I'm guessing. They don't play a card. I get no hits. They get two. It's getting a little nerve-wracking. I press. Redrawing into Cruel Weather could be useful. Also, a little weird that I didn't give this army in Vale of Karnan any leadership. Like, I could have given it a little leadership when I moved armies around. I guess I just didn't, I didn't foresee. I didn't foresee all of this. This was, okay, so that, that was a while ago, and I haven't moved uh, Nazgul since then. All right, I play Cruel Weather here. Saving Relentless Assault. Right, right, right. So I'm saving Relentless Assault for this battle, Vale of Karnan into Dale, because this army doesn't have any leadership, I guess is what I'm thinking. 
Okay. I finally get some hits. They get some back, and uh, now I press for the last time. And am I going to play any card here? I think I'm going to not play a card and just hope to roll a six. No, I do. All right. So I'm playing Relentless Assault here, and I'm thinking, you know what, I will... Uh, I will just let this seven point nine point army beat this six point army. Yeah. So this turned out to be kind of a big mistake, I think, letting Pelarger come in because this would have been a very big difference if I'm in the city and they have to attack back, or if they move here and then they haven't taken Pelargir. So that yeah, that was definitely a mistake. All right, I finally have Dol Amroth. They play theirs another way. What? When did they draw into that? I missed that they drew that. So they, they drew that this turn. That's great. They heal one. They move. And it's two and a reveal. All right. So we know that they can't. They cannot win this turn. Sad for them. And then I win with... Potentially win with Foul Thing from the Deep. So do I play Foul Thing from the Deep here? Or do I just go and attack... I have a ring, so I can just move Nazgul and then attack into Dale. Feels relatively safe. I could also go to Lamadon and attack into Pilar Gear. What is the, I mean, I'm in a very good position now, but what do I do that maximizes chances? Basically, these four eyes and the zero, yeah, I don't think I play Foul Thing here. I think I just try and win militarily. Move Nazgul and attack into this. Move Nazgul to Vale of Karnak. I don't know. I think maybe I go... No, because they can muster. Right. So if I move to Lamadon, they can muster in Pilar gear with their last die. And then that's not... I mean, probably okay, but not, not guaranteed. So I think probably what I'm doing is moving to Vale of Karnan and attacking. That's probably what I would do. Yeah. So I move to Vale of Karnan. Then I have Foul Thing from the Deep to be able to play it. They use an elven ring to reinforce Dale as much as possible because they have to hold it. That's a great play. One extra unit, that could make a difference. Yep. All right. So I attack and I play there terrible and I get... Uh, three hits. So that is pretty horrible for them. They get three back at me, but that is not going to work for them because I'm going to start now. I'm going to be rolling five dice to their four. I get to redraw a card that is not useful, but I still have plus two hit points and plus three leadership. And now they don't have the city benefit anymore. So um, I get three hits. They get two hits. I get three hits. All right, game, game over. So... Great game, well played, very well played by free people. If I did not accidentally cheat by playing a extra uh, tile drawing card in Minas Tirith, then uh, it's quite possible, very reasonable that free people would have won. So I'm glad we ended up replaying this. This game did not count for the tournament, but it was still, I thought, worthwhile to analyze. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's look at statistics. And you can see that I was minus seven on sixes. So I did feel that a little bit probably in Dole Amroth and Lorien. Um, but I thought this was a really nice lesson in what can go wrong if you attack Rohan early and then make a mess of it. So nice game. I enjoyed this and I'm glad we got to replay it because of the rule, rule mistake. So, all right. Thanks. Have a good rest of the day.